Hi there, welcome to Factoring with Cubes. We're gonna take a closer look at how we can actually factor cubics. And what I mean by that is something that would look almost like this. We've never seen something like this before. We've definitely seen ones that look like this, and we're definitely gonna revisit those here in this lesson. Well, I have some good news for you. There is a factoring shortcut, and the way that we remember this shortcut is with SOAP. So we're gonna look at sum of cubes and difference of cubes. You can actually see, here's the A's, and both of these have everything in the same spot. So the A's are in the same spot. You can kind of see that these B's are all in the same spot. The only big difference between both of these are these signs. So it looks like I'm there's subtraction, there's a plus, there's a plus. Man, if only there was a way that I could really just remember the signs of this. And yes, there is a way, and it is called SOAP. SOAP stands for same, opposite, always positive. So what we mean by that is let's look at the difference of cubes. I can see that I'm starting out with subtraction. So the first sign that I pick is going to be the same. So if I start with subtraction, I start with subtraction here. And then I pick the opposite, which is plus. And the last one is always positive. Same thing on here. I'm beginning with addition. So I'm going to do the same sign. So addition, addition opposite, which is subtraction, always positive. So the very, very first one I've got is x cubed minus one. So first things first is try to figure out what got cubed in both places. So in this first one, x got cubed and one cubed is one. Next thing I like to do is make a little skeleton with my A's and B's. And now you can see that you can start plugging in. A is the first one. B is the second one. So B A squared, so that's the same thing as X. So you can kind of see I'm doing a little bit of substitution. Just be sure at the very end to simplify. Don't leave it as one squared or one X. We can always clean stuff like that right on up. So I'm still going to try to look for these perfect cubes. So 8X cubed, well, that's the same thing as 2X. And an easy way you can check your answer, okay, 2 cubed gives me 8. Okay, x cubed is x cubed. And then right here, 27 is also a perfect cubed. It's three. And then you do the same thing. So I'm going to fill in with my shortcut. So I'm starting with subtraction. So I have the same sign, opposite, always positive. All right, here's my a's and my b's from my shortcut, or the first piece and the second piece. So I'm going to fill in 2x minus 3 all done. This is where it gets a little tricky because I'm squaring that entire first term and then I'm squaring that last term. So the simplifying here is going to get a little interesting because you're going to have to square the 2 and square the x and you can also simplify 2x times 3 for a final answer in purple. 2x minus 3, 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right, number three is gonna be interesting because if I try to think of perfect cubes, well, two's not a perfect cubed and I'm pretty sure neither is 250, but I can take a two out, I can take a GCF. Okay, X is now a perfect cube and 125 is. So now, yes, I can use my shortcut. I see addition, so I'm gonna use sum of cubes and fill everything in and simplify for a final answer. Again, do not leave it as five squared. Please simplify that to 25, as far as far as you can go. So let's get our hands dirty with soap and take a look at what happens with ones like four and five. Well, I can already see there's four terms and luckily SpongeBob is pointing that out for us. So we're gonna do some good old fashioned roping just like we did previously. So what do these first two have in common? Well, I definitely see they both have an X squared and that's gonna leave me with X cubed plus 16 is left over. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rope the last two together. Okay, what do they have in common? Well, they don't really have much, but they do have a subtraction. So I'm gonna take out a negative one or a minus one. Ah, x cubed is positive. Okay, good. I've got matching pieces. 
both of these have an x cubed plus 16. So I'm going to factor that away from both. And now I'm just going to be left with x squared minus 1. Now before you get boxing happy, be sure that neither of those break down further. So let's start with the cubic. All right. Yep. X cubed. That can definitely break down because that's the same thing as this. Oh, 16. Uh, 16 is not a perfect cube. So that piece isn't going to break down more. So let's focus on the second piece. Ooh, I see a squared. Okay, well, we definitely have a perfect square there. I also see a difference or a subtraction right here. So yes, that piece can go further. And then I can break that red piece up into plus one and minus one. So that's a good old difference of squares. All right, let's take a closer look at five. I still see four terms and nothing, no major GCF at the beginning. So let's go ahead and start roping some terms together. So same thing like before, what do these have in common? Well, I see an X squared. Let's see what's left over. All right, X cubed minus eight definitely would be left. And we're gonna do the same thing. Let's rope the last two together. Well, I see a four for sure. And I'm going to take out the negative with it because that is going to leave me a positive x cubed and a minus 8. Okay, let's keep going. These both have x cubed minus 8. So let's take both of those out. So factor that. And then we're going to have x squared minus 4. Yep, x can be cubed and eight is a perfect cube so you can use soap here you can do that and it looks like i have a difference of cubes so that's how i'm going to break that down so wherever i see an a i'm going to give that a good square and then b is the second term so there's minus two and then i'm going to go ahead and put two squared okay and i'm going to come back to that I see x squared, okay, ah, yes, that is a perfect square and it is subtraction. So at the very top, be sure you write down difference of squares to help you remember. That's the other shortcut that we have. So that's the one that turns into plus or minus, so those pieces. So I'm gonna kind of put both these pieces side by side. And I'm going to have a plus right here. Squidward's going to help me with my minus sign. And then I'm going to have x plus 2, x minus 2. All you're going to do is just simplify for that final, final answer. And take a closer look. I've got an x minus 2 piece here and another x minus 2 piece there. So it looks like I have two of those. So I can multiply that by itself. And then I'm going to simplify this one because I've got x squared plus 2x plus 4. And I have an x plus 2 piece. Final answer is in the orange. So take a look and try to factor x squared minus 8x plus 12. And then try to factor this last one and keep an eye out for a potential shortcut. If I try to do first times the last, and again, we always try to add to the middle. So I would need to multiply to 12 and somehow add to get to negative eight. Perfect, I've got two numbers, negative six, negative two. And if you wanna try your grouping again, it does work here. You just wanna split that middle term up. So here's kind of what that first one is gonna look like. So you can see I split up that negative eight X, went ahead and roped my terms together and I ended up with something like x minus two and x minus six. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. And here's the interesting thing. Well, first times the last is still 12 and I'm still adding to negative eight. So this x works the same way. And again, let's go ahead and break that middle piece up and rope some terms together. 
All right, so it looks like x minus 3. I can factor that out. Interesting. Can that go any further? Why, look at the blue piece. There's a 2 and a 2. That can factor further. So that kind of shows you that you don't have to always take the GCF out first, but you can see why it's helpful because you won't have to deal with it at the end. What I really love about this one is both of these use the exact same x. They both use those numbers negative 6 and negative 2. Here's the good thing. Take a look at this one right here. I have negative 6 and negative 2. Oh, look at that. x minus 2 and x minus 6. It's kind of like copying and pasting the numbers. But that didn't work on this second one. I, why wouldn't it work on that one? Well, take a closer look. You've got x squared. Oh, and 2x squared. So that's going to make it a little different. So here's a good thing about this. Yes, you are welcome to jump to that shortcut. If you have a regular x squared all by itself and you factor and notice, oh, I can do negative 6 and negative 2, you are welcome to jump right on ahead to this because eventually we're just going to want to factor as fast as possible. So that I'm more than happy if you want to jump ahead and start using that shortcut. So something that we noticed when x is squared all by itself, negative 6 and negative 2 were in my factors. But when there was a number in front, the factors didn't quite work out that way. So we just have to be really careful with using this kind of shortcut. So let's try two more examples together. So on this one, uh, 2 and 50. Well, neither one of those are perfect squares, but I could take a 2 out. I'm really good at taking out a GCF because now I've got x squared plus 25. Here's the thing. A lot of us like to jump and say, oh, okay, that's x minus 5 and x plus 5. Oh, and I'm not going to forget my 2 because Ms. Hawkins would give me a hard time. Here's the problem with that. What you've just made, here's x squared. Okay, everything looks fine. Here's 5x. Here's negative 5x. What, Miss Hawkins? Those canceled out. I'm on the right track. <gasps> Except for this last one. That's negative 25, not positive 25. So on this one, ooh, we actually can't go any farther than what we have right here. So on this one, you're just gonna run a box. That is a final answer. There is no sum of cubes. For this one, you can try to factor it the other way. So first times the last, well, that would be 25. So what would multiply to 25? And notice you would be adding to zero. There's no combination that would do that because I can't do five and five because that wouldn't add to zero. And I can't do negative five and negative five because that wouldn't add to zero. So on sum of squares, there's no possible way that we can multiply to a positive number and add to zero. So that's why there is no sum of squares. All right, this one, well, I can go ahead and jump in. I can do first times the last, but what I'm gonna do is focus on these numbers here because they all have something in common. So take out the GCF. I always like to take it out first just so I don't have to worry about it later down the road. You can take it out later. It just usually tends to be forgotten when we do that. So I'm going to take out a 3. So I'm going to be left with a 2x and a minus 3. Now before you start boxing your answer and saying you're done, you factored, you took a GCF out, always check your answer if it can factor more. So I've got first times the last, so that's going to multiply to negative 3, and we're going to somehow add to 2. Okay, let's start thinking of numbers. Well, I can do 3 and 1. Well, that wouldn't get me to negative 3, but if I make that negative, that would definitely multiply to negative 3, and that would add to 2. Here's the good news. I have a regular x squared, so if you would like to go ahead, don't forget your 3, and jump straight to breaking that down because I've got plus 3 and minus 1. I am okay with that. Yes, if you would like to still group just to be sure you have the right answer, you may absolutely do that. So whichever way you would like to factor, 
Just want to let you know if you'd rather jump and use a shortcut, you're also welcome to do that too. But I also want you to know why it works.